Welcome to MouthpieceSports.com's High School Buzz Session. We have a very diverse group for a very diverse group of products today and topics. I will start the man in blue on the end. That's Chris Keene, a former college basketball player at St. Francis University, now the assistant at Loyola Academy. Chris, thanks for taking time. The man in the middle, no stranger to uh, cutting down nets and hoisting championship trophies. They need a new trophy case at Simeon after his reign. The head coach of the Wolverines, Coach Robert Smith, thanks for taking time. Thank you. And the man to my right, who always looks good in a tight shirt, from Powerport <laughs> uh, Performance Camps, John Haley, a former college baseball player, personal trainer, and now has a unique venue in Power Performance Camps and something I'd like to delve into right away because these guys coach team games, and I think most people would assume that Power Performance Camps and camps like it are about individual instruction, but it's much more than that, isn't it? No, absolutely. It's, it goes far beyond individual instruction, and coming from a situation where I used to be, a personal trainer working with athletes who would pay, you know, I don't want to say ungodly amounts, but, but large money, sums sure. of money, yeah, you know, um, and it's an investment. That's certainly what it is to come and train with me and my associates to get better at, at sports, footwork, agility, weightlifting, you know, making sure that they have a good sound body. Um, but what we wanted to do was create an environment where all sorts of kids from all socioeconomic backgrounds, um, whatever it is that they, wherever they come from, that they're able to enjoy the same benefits as those who are a little bit more wealthy so well you've got two varying degrees of that spectrum here coach smith coaching the chicago public league at a powerhouse program chris coaches at loyal academy in winnetka and i don't think anybody's gonna confuse you know vincennes avenue with winnetka yet both successful programs in their own right how effective coach have you seen some of these individual or team power performance things or do you see a lot of that with the athletes at simeon or are these kids still learning in the gym, on the playground, and, and just playing AAU ball? Well, a little bit of both. Uh, we're fortunate enough to be sponsored by Nike, so they bring in the Sparks training. And what we do is we sit around and, and, and talk to the guys who come in and work with the Sparks, and they give us individual instructions, and we try to implement those things ourselves. And it takes away from having to go out and pay, and we try to do those things. And then we call guys back in to see if they can come in and help if we not think we're getting it the structure and the way that it should be done. So it helps us out a lot that we, you know, involved with Nike and those guys came in and gave us a good training. Two years ago is when it started, and then we've just been going on with it ever since. And they actually leave, actually leaves us the equipment to use, so that helps out a lot. Uh, winning back-to-back -back state championships, getting to another state championship, and having players like Derrick Rose and some of the athletes you've had come out of Simeon, I would think would make you an attractive candidate for a Spark program from Nike to be sponsored, but not everyone has that kind of success. And while Loyola Academy is successful, I would think that some of the athletes up there do have the ability, their parents have the ability to provide for them individualized instruction. Chris, does that change your job as a coach to try and manage both those expectations? Because let's face it, parents are investing, they want to see results, right? Well, absolutely. We, we, I was going to say, I've, I've, at both ends of the spectrum, I've seen, I've seen some of the city kids play, and I know they don't have personalized trainers. They don't have the um, way of getting to that, and they're pretty good players. They're very athletic, and they have agility, and they're quick. So I do understand how important it is, but I also see how it can work just if you're dedicated to playing a game of basketball. With being at Loyola, it is fortunate enough. It's in a nice area. We do have, our kids do have that type, and it does make a difference. I do see it make a difference. Towards the end of games, kids are just stronger or more physical, and part of our success over a few years is we kind of just work sure. teams out at the end of the game. Sure. And that's just from being in great shape, being strong, and being athletic and agility-wise, and that comes from the hard work and training. John, are kids ready for that kind of commitment? Because I played basketball in college. I wasn't ready for that kind of commitment. I was dying for two years and getting beat up. But weight training and physical training and endurance training, all those things obviously make you a better player. How do you get kids to buy into that? Well, what we really focus on is the athlete who, who comes to us and, and wants to change. I'm not trying to force anybody to, who doesn't want to do it. If a kid doesn't want to work, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not my position to talk them into it. If they want to come and they're ready to work, we're going to take on those kids. And that's, and that's, that's, how, we, that's how we operate. I, uh, if they don't want to work, they're going to get passed up. And that's just the way it is. That's a common theme in coaching anyway, isn't it, Coach? You don't want to work, you're not going to play. That's definitely right. But I think a lot of the kids now in the inner city, by them going out and venturing out to play AAU, they're seeing a different side of other kids. And they see how big they are and how strong they are. And, and some of them don't know that they may be a year older than them. Mm -hmm. And that definitely is a big effect. Uh, you have guys who 
put freshmen or sophomores on varsity and they're playing against guys who are 18 and they're not as strong as those guys are. Sure. So that kind of helps us every day in our practice because we practice all together. So our younger kids have to play against our older kids. kids. So they're not as strong. So they always come in, comment about when we're going to get in the weight room because, you know, this guy's just too strong for me. So it kind of helps our program out a lot. But I think just uh, the parts of, of guys seeing other people and college players and see how strong they are and how they look and how their bodies look. And I think that's been helping a lot with the kids in the inner city are working on weight lifting. And, and a lot of them don't have the access to, to get to certain places. But for the most part, I think most of them are trying to get to those places. Chris, Coach Smith touched on a hot button topic that's uh, on the tip of every basketball coach like yourself and parent and fan, and that's AAU. AAU, I hear great things, I hear bad things. Give me a thumbnail impression of what you think AAU basketball is doing to high school basketball. I see the good side of it where it's getting exposure to kids and kids who may not have that chance, they're able to play more basketball and against good players. But I, I've seen a, it change the game dramatically to a point where when it, they play in so many games now, kids are getting burnt out. And during the middle of their season, during our core season, losses aren't as important anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't take it to heart as much as they used to because, for instance, we'll, we lose a sectional cha championship game, biggest game of their lives, so to speak, sure. to date doesn't mean as much because they're going to go play 50 or 100 more games. They're gonna, in two weeks, they're going to be in Vegas in a tournament. It, it doesn't matter as much, and it's, it, that's kind of the frustrating end because coaches are taking the losses more than, than players. And, I, again, I understand the benefits of it, but I, I see you have kids play for coach. You have outside influence of parents telling their kids what they should be doing on a basketball court. Then you, maybe you have two or three AAU coaches telling their kids what to do. So now you have five, six, seven different people sure. instructing them on what to do. How's the kid going to be able to li Who's he going to listen to? Where, where is he going to Where is he going to go from there? I mean, am I going to listen to my AU coach? Am I going to listen to my parents? Right. Am I going to listen to my head coach? I mean, there's just a lot of variables, outside, outside influences that affect the way the, the, child, the kid is playing. Well, let's ask Coach Smith. I mean, a young man you had, Derek Rose, who just declared that he's going to turn pro and go to the NBA and will likely be the first pick or certainly one of the first two or three. He played a lot of AAU basketball, was an AAU phenom, knew half the kids the All-Americans that are out there from AAU basketball. How have you managed to deal with the AAU impact on the Simeon program? Well, what we did was is, is we instructed guys to stay together. And when Derek played, it was five, six of those guys from my team on one team. Mm -hmm. They still did things that we did. So it kind of helped them because they played together all the time. And they was playing against the best competition in the country. So in that instance, it worked. You know, and then it also gave us a chance for the guys who didn't play a lot to stay at home and play with us for the whole summer, and they got better. And they built a, a chemistry among themselves so that you figure our starters were out playing, our reserves were at home playing together, so they, they built a, a, a wall between themselves sure. to be able to come and play and say, well, okay, if these guys get hurt, something may happen, I can step out and play because I played all summer against somebody else's first team. But the knock on it is that, I mean, like he said, it, kids get burnt out, you know, and, and we don't understand it because we think they're 17 and 18 and say, well, they should be able to run and play forever. Oh, but yeah, right. it's not true because their bodies are wore out, their knees, they're constantly running. So what, what we do is, it's August, we do anything. It's all over. Basketball is, is over okay. for the whole month of August. And we let them let their bodies rest. Some people get injured and little bumps and bruises. So we try to take that away for August and September, and then we start back conditioning stuff in October. But AAU is definitely out of control. It is it's taken to another level right now because a lot of college coaches get to cheat sure. in that situation because they can't guys, recruit through high school, but they can recruit through AAU. Because the AAU coach don't know what's going on, and he's just so happy to be talking to a Roy Williams or. or Calipari or, or, or Mike Krzyzewski that he's just doing whatever it takes, you know, to say I, I had a chance to talk to those guys. And not saying that, that those specific guys are cheating, but it's just what's going on right sure. now. You know, and you got some guys who do it the right way and you have some that don't. And it kind of bothers you that as a coach to say, well, I'm being recruited by Connecticut. Well, they never contacted me. Yeah. Who, who did they talk to? Right. You know, if you're being, well, the AAU coach knows. So, I mean, it's kind of frustrating 
But in the end, they still have to come back to us because we hold the transcripts and we know the grades and, and they don't know those things. So, Well, AAU basketball is a, another level of involvement in sports and there are many different levels now affecting the actual team game. Secondary individual instruction, team instruction, like what John does. We'll get into that and uh, several more topics when we return on the MouthpieceSports.com's High School Buzz Session.